What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fi, I'm flying solo today. She should be back with us tomorrow, hopefully. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into it. I just want to, you know, because the DraftKings lineups lock at 640 Eastern, we will start at 545 Eastern today instead of for live instead of 6 Eastern. Please like and subscribe and all that. Check out all of our stuff. Shout out to Rody for making a nice run in the uh, the big uh, DraftKings fan duel. I'm sorry, DraftKings finale. Um, hopefully he can take down the next one. He he was he had a good lineup, just didn't quite get there. Uh, but shout out to our guy Rody and uh, yeah, come join us at True DFS. And we are getting ready for the NFL season. But uh, in the meantime, let's talk about today's Monday MLB slate. I'm going to go through and share my screen and just really quickly go through each game because. You know, these shows alone are a little bit different. It's me and Sheets can go back and forth. We're coming up with our stuff. When I do them alone, I tend to go through and get all my thoughts together. And then I sort of talk about them as the show comes up rather than I, I like to be underprepared for the for the combo ones. I like to be uh, overprepared for these ones. So let's clear my screen real quick because that was just a mock lineup I did. You can see all of my early builds on uh, TrueDFS.com as well as my core plays, as well as my bets of the day. Uh, Rody has his pitching stuff, his stacks sheets has his, and uh, yeah, it's worth it. I think uh, combined with, of course, uh, our awesome partner and Saberson. So, with that said, let's go game by game here uh, on the DraftKings slate. We will talk, you know, a little bit about FanDuel at the end. So, I think that this is obviously like you're going to get really high ownership on St. Louis. I like St. Louis a lot here. I love teams playing in Cincinnati. It's just such a great hitters park and just awesome for power in general. So. Really hard for me to ignore uh, the Cardinals, especially because it's 84 degrees there. A little bit of side wind, nothing really crazy with that. You do have some rain concerns, but I don't think it's too bad. So I feel very good about the St. Louis stack. I have them rated number one. The problem is with the ownership, I'm going to have to probably play less of them than most people. So maybe I'll be using them more as a as a secondary stack than a, than a primary t- today. I do like Mikolas for what it's worth today. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to much of him. He's actually just... I mean, he had that horrible outing in Colorado, no big deal, was really, really struggled against uh, the Cubs the other day, but still threw his 106 pitches after a rough start, sort of got back in the game a little bit. Not a high strikeout guy, so sort of needs things to go clean. Cincinnati is a bad enough offense where I could see him mowing these guys down. And I think at 8,400, he's at least in the mix, but St. Louis is going to rate as the top shot stack of the day. I have no problem with it, but I'm going to be trying to find some different things to do just because of ownership. All right. Uh, I do think Gonsolin's in play, as I always mentioned, at 9,600. He always gets lower ownership than the other guys. A little bit cheaper, a little bit of a discount. Hard to argue with Bert him over Burns, but um, you got to like the matchup against Miami. Consistently should be in the 20-plus range here, somewhere right around there on his way to a potential Cy Young season. And uh, I think he's going to throw a lot more pitches than he did the last time out when they took him out because they just had a huge lead. It's just something the Dodgers will do sometimes. That could happen again today, but I do like Gonsolin. No interest in Lopez. I have the Dodgers rated fifth on my stacks. It's really hard for me to general to pick on Lopez because I think he's actually a pretty decent pitcher, but I do think the Dodgers are the kind of team that could absolutely light him up. So on a slate like this, maybe to get a little bit different, um, depending on where their ownership is, you do go with a team like the Dodgers. As I said, I have them ranked fifth as of right now. Toronto has been really, really letting us down, especially over the last three days. They scored three runs in three games against the Angels, and some of those were pretty soft matchups. I still like the idea of going back to them today against Assad and what could end up being a bullpen game. Assad did throw 85 pitches in his first outing. It actually looked pretty good, but he only pitched four innings. Um, He hasn't faced a team like Toronto before. I do think Toronto is is very viable. I have them rated fourth, um, but I have them for pieces, especially Vlad, Kirk, more so on FanDuel, Chapman, uh, Tioscar, and Springer as my favorites with Bichette in there. I'm going to be mixing those guys in more as pieces probably than full stacks. They're also really expensive, so it's harder to full stack them on DK, but I will get probably at least one full stack of them in. And I really like Berrios. Um, I think Berrios and Montas are, are two guys who I'm looking to spend down on today. Uh, we know Berrios has a wide range of outcomes. We know there's a high ceiling for his price. I think you can't do much better, although Montas is a good argument, than, uh, than Berrios here. And uh, I think you could see him, you know, throw some more pitches tonight if they need him to. If they're blowing him out, maybe maybe not. But I think that, you know, we've seen him sort of in this 80 to 90, but he's had some rough starts. So you see the 70s in there. I just feel like he's got enough stuff to, be, to beat this Cubs offense, which has actually been a lot better the second half of the season. But uh, I, I will take my gamble on Berrios today. And he is one of the guys who I have as one of my my core three, which along with Montas and Burns. 
Boston, Minnesota, this is a game of getting pieces for me. Um, I think it's actually like a priority to get some some pieces here because both pitchers can get hit really hard. I, I could see an argument for a Minnesota stack because Bellow's sort of been all over the place. I still believe in this kid's talent. I don't know how many pitches they're going to let him throw. Um, and, you know, the Boston bullpen has been pretty lousy, especially since the All-Star break. Dylan Bundy just has lost his strikeout stuff completely from, from the years past, and it's hard to argue for him, but I think that, you know, Devers is a guy who has a one-off stands out for me. Verdugo's too really cheap. He's the other one for, for Boston that I have a lot of interest in. For Minnesota, Miranda, um, you have to use up a first base spot. I prefer him against lefties, but I'm open to that. Arias is still reasonable enough. Without Buxton, it's not as much fun as the stack, but I certainly could see an argument depending on where Kepler hits uh, for a mini stack for Minnesota. Uh, Pittsburgh and Milwaukee. I think that it's really hard not to argue that Burns is pretty far and away the top pitcher on the slate. I don't think anyone will disagree with that. It's just going to be about the ownership. Can you fit in the stacks you want? I think you can pretty comfortably on both sides. I'm, I specifically tried to avoid him a little bit on FanDuel just to see if I could get a different build with a Burrios or something like that. But I don't think that uh, I, I don't think it's optimal to to ignore Burns tonight. I think this should be a really a really big bounce back outing after the Dodgers lit him up last time. Um, I think that he gets, you know, he has a, he has a strong matchup against, uh, Pittsburgh. He's been good against them. So I do like Burns a lot and maybe, I don't know if I want to say more importantly, but I, I think that Milwaukee is, I have them rated as one, a just not, you know, not factoring in ownership. I think you could argue that Milwaukee's number one today, uh, ahead of Milwaukee, ahead of St. Louis. They're very close. Uh, maybe St. Louis gets the, just the obvious edge, but factoring in price and ownership. I think Milwaukee is going to be the team I'm probably most overexposed to. And it's just, you know, the top guys right there, Adamas, Yelich, Renfro, Tellez, McCutcheon. Those are my main guys. Then you got both Urias and Wong. You can use either one at second base. And depending on who catches Nar Narvaez or Caratini, both have enough power to be viable. So I really like the Milwaukee stack tonight and I will be heavy on them. I had, like I said, I have them as one a, but considering ownership, I have them as number one because I can't afford to, uh, to just play the chalk on a slate that's sort of small and uh, getting smaller. So, all right, Montas against the Angels. Uh, we'll get some ownership. Finally looked okay in that outing against the Mets. Still has not been nearly himself since the All-Star break. He's had some tough matchups in there to, in his defense, but I'm not the All-Star break since his, uh, his coming back. Um, just really hasn't put up a game that we really need. And I, I don't know. I just don't feel like great about him. But I don't feel terrible. I, I just I, I I feel like this is too good of a matchup to ignore at 7200. Uh, but with high ownership, I think Barrios is a legitimate pivot. I think playing those two guys together allows you some different builds. And I think that's kind of an interesting route to go. What I don't expect people to do is play the Yankees today. Um, I do think Judge will get some ownership because it's a lefty. It's you're always going to see it. But Judge Stan Stanton uh, Torres stand out to me as a nice little three man stack. Depending on who's catching for them, um, I, I guess Trevino's out tonight. Still think you can play Higgy, but I think I'd rather play Trevino if he was in the lineup. Um, just so, you know, he's been good power wise this year, and I, I do think they're viable for a full stack here for the Yankees. I'm not going to play Suarez, um, but I, I, I like the Yankees a lot more for pieces than as a stack. I don't really I have them rated sixth for my stacks, but I think that, that again you're looking for pieces more from them and the Judge Stanton. Uh, so I guess secondary Judge, Judge Stanton and Torres are the ones that stand out the most for me. Uh, Philadelphia, Arizona, uh, Bumgarner has been back to terrible Bumgarner. They've been working on trying to fix him. It's not been working. And the one thing he's got is a leash, which is kind of a good thing if you want to play the other side of it, because they'll leave him in there in games where even where he's getting rocked, uh, you've got some expensive bats like, uh, Hoskins. And then you've got the outfielders and Schwarber and Harper in the lefty lefty spot. I like all those guys a lot. Um, I do like Philly. I think they're the number three stack on the slate for me. But I do think getting, uh, even if you're not playing them, getting some exposure to uh, to Hoskins, especially maybe Rio Muto on fan, uh, on FanDuel, um, Alec Baum, and then you've got the outfielders in Schwarber, Harper, Castellanos are all very, very viable. I just wish that roof was open. Huge, huge hit park downgrade for Philly today. San Francisco, San Diego. Um, I like both these pitchers. I like Clevenger just barely. Um, I wish they would give him that leash that he used to have where he was throwing 110 pitches every start or 120 back in Cleveland, but that's just not how San Diego does things. So uh, viable, but probably going to be on the outside looking in for me is Clevenger. And I will probably end up with or, with or near the field on Rodon. It's just easy enough to get a stack that I like, like Milwaukee in with Rodon and Burns. So I am going to take some shots there. It is a, you know, it's it's not as easy of a matchup as some of the other ones tonight, 
But I think Rodon is extremely viable and just consistently, even when he struggles, he still kind of gets there. This one really bad outing or not good outing was against the Dodgers. And that was a while ago. I just think that uh, the upside is, is going to be hard for me to ignore Rodon. So uh, he's the fourth pitcher for me. I do have Burns, Montas, and Barrios pricing and ownership considering ahead of him. But I think you could absolutely argue just to play he and Burns in cash or in tournaments. And I am not going to get to any of the hitting in this last game. So again, quickly to highlight what I was talking about. Um, I do like the, uh, my priorities are St. Well, St. Louis is less of a priority considering the ownership. If it changes at all, I'll go back to it. But Milwaukee, St. Louis are, are sort of who I built most of my cores around. I, I do like the Dodgers, Toronto and Philly as my next stacks. And then I'm going to, whatever stacks I use, I, I think getting pieces of Boston, Minnesota or pieces of the Yankees are sort of what I'm doing, but it's going to be focused a lot around Milwaukee, St. Louis, some Philly, some Dodgers, some Toronto, mostly Philly and mostly Milwaukee, though, is probably is my number one team as of right now. So good luck to everyone. I'll see you all at 545 Eastern time. Let's crush it. Let's end August strong. It's not been my favorite month for DFS, so it's time to turn it around. Good luck to everybody out there and let's make some money. See you at the top of the leaderboards, guys.